Okay, we're going to look at the concept of rate limiting steps in photosynthesis. And this is not just for photosynthesis, but there are rate limiting steps in all kinds of metabolic reactions. But uh, we can look at it for photosynthesis specifically. To use an analogy, I'm going to use one of my favorite snacks here in Japan, and that is something called Jagariko. I love this stuff. It's just like dried french fry goodness. I don't know what it is. But anyways, I imagine that when people try to make these things, several things are uh, necessary. So uh, this is probably simplifying it crazy. But you need some potatoes. I'm going to call that process potatoification. You need, for all these little peppers and stuff like that, the peppering cycle maybe. Uh, you got to provide paper for the packaging. So we're going to call that paper paperlysis. And you need some foil for the top. So we're going to call that foilolysis. All right, I'm making all this up. And in the process of doing this, you got a lot of workers in the factory that are trying to make all this work. You got the guy who's going to shred the potatoes and chop them up. This person's going to prepare all the uh, the peppers, and this person's got to cut uh, the paper, and you've got the preparation of the foil and everything like that. So if you think of these all as steps in the production of a product here, in this case, Jagarico, they're all important. Um, how efficient they all work. Well, how quickly we can pump out these actual full products here really though at any given point at any given point depends on who is slowest in the process so it doesn't matter if this guy's super duper this guy's super duper this guy's super duper and this guy's super duper if all of these people are working at maximum efficiency if this guy is uh, asleep on the job or his scissors are broken or he's just kind of a slower worker at any given time uh, the rate at which these things get produced really depends on this dude. So we fire him and bring in somebody else. Whoosh, whoosh, somebody else comes in. Okay. So it depends on the situation. Maybe this guy had, you know, a really bad morning or bad stomach and he woke up with horrible diarrhea and he's not feeling perfect today. So at any given time, he may be the rate limiting step that's preventing maximum output, maximum efficiency. Okay. So at any given point, any one of these steps could be the step that is limiting uh, this whole process of Jagarico synthesis. And the same is true for something like photosynthesis. And there are three main factors that could be important. And we're going to look at each one of these in, in a little bit and find out exactly what step in photosynthesis gets messed with here. But uh, these are the three main factors, and these happen to be the three main factors that you might investigate in an experiment as well, too, which are temperature, light intensity, and carbon dioxide concentration. The fact is, is that like many other metabolic reactions, photosynthesis is very complex. There's a lot of steps. A limiting factor is the factor, the one factor that if changed can actually increase the rate of a particular reaction like photosynthesis because it's closest to its minimum. So back here, this guy uh, might be closest to its minimum efficiency. So this is the step. Foilolysis is being is the rate limiting step here, I guess, for the production of Jagarico. So the rate of photosynthesis is always determined by the slowest step, and that slowest step at any given point is called the rate limiting step. So I'm going to refer to that as RLS from here. So let's look at light intensity. If the light intensity is the problem, then what's going to be affected? Well, the light dependent reactions, all this stuff up here, if there's not enough light, then we don't actually get you know electrons excited, you don't get protons flowing, you don't get ATP produced, you don't get NADPH produced. So with lack of light, you actually end up with smaller amounts or not enough NADPH and ATP produced. But that's not the rate limiting step though. That's the effect of this factor, light intensity not being high enough. The rate limiting step is the point where we actually need this stuff. So where do we need this stuff? Well, it's being used in the Calvin cycle. So down here, where NADPH and ATP are being used, this is actually the rate limiting step. So the step where we are converting glycerate 3-phosphate, otherwise known as GP, into TP, or triose phosphate. So this becomes the rate limiting step if light is the limiting factor. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let's use a few, a few other examples. Carbon dioxide concentration. If there's not enough carbon dioxide, well, 
where does carbon dioxide come into this entire process here? It comes in here during this carbon fixation process in the Calvin cycle where carbon dioxide joins with RUBP and it goes through these processes here. If we don't have enough carbon dioxide, if, low, if we have low carbon dioxide, that becomes the limiting factor. So limiting factor, this is going to prevent the, the efficient production of uh, glucose and starch because we don't have enough carbon dioxide. So where is the, late, the, uh, the rate limiting step? Well, that's obvious. It has to be right here. It's this process where carbon dioxide is actually fixed to produce glycerate 3-phosphate, to produce GP. So the step is right here, and that's where uh, it gets limited. So the rate limiting step is, the in this case, with where carbon dioxide is the limiting factor, is the point where carbon dioxide is supposed to be fixed to produce glycerate 3-phosphate fixed fixation that's just a fancy way to say what happens to carbon as as it becomes uh, utilized in this whole process and so what's going to happen if this process doesn't happen well RUBP is going to accumulate and we should expect that these things NADPH are going to and ATP they're going to accumulate as well because they're not going to be used to do this next process and one final thing that could be limiting um, photosynthesis is temperature and you know about enzymes and how low temperatures can reduce uh, enzyme reaction rate or high temperatures can cause denaturing and also mess with um, enzyme reactions. And in, it just so happens in this case, enzymes are very, very important. One of the most famous ones is Rubisco. And Rubisco, which is actually called ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase, is the enzyme that will combine this 5-carbon compound with carbon dioxide. Okay, So if temperatures are really low, then temperature now becomes a limiting factor. And all enzymes in the Calvin cycle are going to work slowly, particularly Rubisco, because this is the very first one that's important. So at higher low temperatures, RUBP carboxylase, or Rubisco, doesn't work efficiently. So the rate limiting step is where that reaction is supposed to happen and that is where uh, carbon dioxide is supposed to be fixed. So that's the idea of uh, rate limiting steps here. So each one of these factors, light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, or temperature, could all be rate limiting steps. But at any given point, only one of them is going to be causing the main um, problem. So even if you increase, let's say you're doing an experiment and you decide uh, you, you want to increase carbon dioxide. So you make the carbon dioxide concentration really, really high, and you expect to see photosynthesis just bumping up like crazy, right? But nothing changes. If nothing changes, it's likely that temperature or light intensity is actually the rate limiting step. So it doesn't matter even if you have a high constant concentration of carbon dioxide. Uh, at some point, something one of these other factors is going to be slowing it down. So now you've got to bump up the light intensity. So you bump up the light intensity, and then you see that photosynthesis is happening really crazy. And you bump it up really, really high. But then you notice that at a certain point, more light intensity doesn't change. doesn't change the rate of photosynthesis. Now something else. Now maybe your carbon dioxide is limiting it. So now you've got to bump up the carbon dioxide. So the point is rate limiting steps here are uh, very important to understand in any kind of uh, metabolic reaction and also very important to understand in designing experiments. And in photosynthesis, these three main factors are carbon dioxide, concentration, light intensity, and temperature. And hopefully that cleared up what limiting factors and rate limiting steps are for you. Good luck in your studies.